Community Clampers, welcome back for another episode of Free and Budget Campsites. Queensland. Before we get right into the show, just a quick reminder to turn your notification button on. And at the end of the video, give us a thumbs up. My name is Peter and I'm traveling around Australia, road testing campsites and caravan parks, which are budget and free. Righto, we're at a place called Broadwater Camp Area. It's a great little area. It's around 40 to 50 kilometers outside of Ingham. You just follow the road all the way out here. Now there is a sign coming into this place. You've got to keep a visual out for that. Before before you get here, there's around 17 kilometers of dirt track. Now the dirt track out of five, I'm going to give it a two and a half for corrugations. So it's not too bad. My RV has got 100 PSI in the tires where you guys with caravans, trailer vehicles and everything else, they're only around 40 to 50 PSI. So you're laughing there. But I found out with my vehicle, if you'd go around 60 kilometers an hour, it makes the corrugations a lot better. Now, if you've got any other hints how to get rid of the corrugations and traveling, not by just letting in the tires, something else, speed, whatever, put the comments down below. Give me a hand to learn about corrugations with my vehicle. Look, it is a really great little campsite here. It's a gem hidden away, so shh, don't tell anyone about it. It is really nice here. You've got a swimming hole, which I'll show you throughout the show. You've got two sets of toilets, which are pretty good. You've got one in the camp area, and you've also got one in the day area, which I will show you throughout the show. This place has got bins, which I'll show you where they are, and it's got water all around here. Sad to say, you with the doggies, Sorry, man, it's not a dog-friendly park. It's just the way it is. Believe it or not, it is in a state forest, and most state forests these days are letting dogs in. But there are still signs around here that says no dogs. Let's get in there and have a look what this park has got to offer. No worries, see you soon. When you get here, you have to book on the government website. All the information's down below or on the side, wherever I put it on the screen. But if you go to that website, pick the place where you want to go, time you want to be here, and how many people there is, beautiful. Look, it is cheap. This one's a $7 a night per person. Look, it is a great little site. Look, when you go online and put all your information, it will give you a receipt number. If you haven't got a printer in your van, which most of us haven't these days, look, come in here. They have got tags here you can actually just rip off. Put the receipt number down and put it in front of your van so people can see it, which I have to do very shortly. Yeah, oh, I needed that. No, I made a joke. The toilet facilities, they're pretty nice inside. So to say, clampers, they've only got cold showers up here, but cold showers are due, especially up here, you've got 28 degrees. Now, the showers, like I said, it's a basic sort of shower. You've got privacy, which is a great thing. Now, the toilets, look, seriously, they're all right. I'm pretty impressed with these toilets here, especially for a bush camp like this. And they've got flushing toilets, bonus. They've got hand sanitizer. <laughs> Click! And they've got lots of toilet paper there. And they've even got a brush to scrub it for all you guys that leave skiddies. Really nice toilets. Out of five, I'm going to give them at least a four. Look, they're really high. Look, even a four and a half. Yeah, all right. I've changed my mind. They're a four and a half. They're clean. Mate, I can't complain with those toilets at all. Right as water around the park. Seriously, they have got lots of outlets just like this all around here. Every campsite, believe it or not, has its own water. Cool, huh? But there's one thing you've got to remember. Boil water before drinking. So it's non-treated water. I'm assuming they get it from the creek and pump it down there. There is a pump station just over here. When I always say, should never assume, but one of the locals turned around and said they get the water from the creek. I take it from the local knowledge. And if they say you got to get it from the creek, who am I to argue with them? They live here. I don't. Anyway, boil it before you drink it. Bin time. In the park itself, they have no bins floating around. But on the way out or on the way in, there's a big green bin right beside me. So do us all a favor, when you go in for the day use, or if not, when you're camping, please take all your rubbish, chuck it in a bin on the way back. As it I always say in my videos, leave no trace.
Phone reception. Bleh. You're not going to get any phone reception around here. But apparently, the sign turns around and says you may get some sort of G network between the huts and the creek down in the day area. I am going to test that out during the day. But anyway, the closest phone from here is 23 kilometers away out in Ashton Hotel. It's right near there. That's the first public phone around this area. Look, your phone won't work until you get out of the state forest area, but they did say it might work down there. I'm going down there right now to give it a try. Rightio, phone reception, like I said before, down near the creek and near the picnic areas. Yes, you do get 3G, one bar. Now, I did do a test back in my van with my Telstra box and I turned it on and I got three bars to two bars with Telstra and it comes and goes. It goes down to one bar, then back up to three bars. So it's pretty sketchy out here. Even for a Telstra box, it does break up a little bit while you're on a phone. That's the phone reception. Day use area. Let's get into that day use area area and have a look at it. They've got a set of toilets here, they've got cooking barbecues, and they've got undercover picnic areas. And they've got a swimming hole, which I'll show you very shortly. Let's get in there and have a look. Rightio, the toilet facilities in the day use area. Look, I'm pretty impressed with even these toilets are in here. There's one thing that's letting them down, no hand sanitizer. Look, I don't think there's no actual application that they've bolted on the wall. The other one, I reckon, someone is left here. Good on you for leaving some hand sanitizer. Now the toilets are pretty clean. They're pretty good. They've got lots of toilet paper. They've got a basin to wash your hands. So they've got no hand sanitizer. They've got paper towel. They are clean. Now there's one good thing this place has got too, is a wheelchair access toilet. Now the camping facility over the other side doesn't have one, but this one here has a wheelchair access toilet, which is a fantastic toilet, clean, heaps of toilet paper. Let's go have a look at the Barbies, what do you reckon? They've got electrical barbies over there, which the other campsites only got wooden ones. So we'll have a quick look at those ones and see how they are. The cooking facilities. Look, they've got one gas barbecue here, stainless steel. You've got a... Um, a top burner that you can actually put a wok on or something or other. It's like suited for a hot plate. You've also got a barbecue plate here, which is dead set clean, which I'm happy with. And they've also got undercover picnic areas. Look, they've got four tables and a heap of chairs. Bob's your uncle for range. You get under here and you're laughing. And they have got undercover picnic areas all around this area. So look, if the place is pretty full, don't worry about it, you'll still get a place. I got told by the locals, which is local knowledge, these don't work. Sorry, you gotta bring your own Barbie, but they do look nice here. Just gotta bring your BBQ out. Let's have a quick look at the swimming area. How cool is this? This is the little pontoon that you can actually jump off. It says no diving, look, it's not that deep, so I wouldn't like to go head first in some rocks. It will hurt. What a great little area. You've got a little stool here, you can sit and rest. You've got a place that you can actually climb out of the river. It gets a bit shallow up this end, and it gets a bit shallow down that end. That's where the rocks are, and it goes pretty shallow, as you can hear it. But what a perfect little place to take a dip. We're down at one of the walk tracks down here. It's the Rainforest Walk Track. It's around 1.7 kilometers, uh, the actual circuit, and it's got broad walk and everything else. And I've got told, look, down there, you might be able to get a wheelchair down there. I don't know. Let's go have a look and see what goes on there. There's a big fig that's 200 meters down there. I got told this is the best one to go to. Can't wait to see. But I did get told to wear your air guard. big runs. I hope you like that bit of a run full stop right around that little bit of a circuit. Look, the state forest people have done a fantastic job with this little thing here. Look, if you've got a, a wheelchair which has got the big wheels, as you can tell by some of the footage that I showed you, you can probably take a wheelchair person around there. And all around this boardwalk is wheelchair access and even the toilets, mate. Seriously, the state forest has done really well on those tracks and they're worth coming to see. Mate, seriously, it is quite nice, but 
I do say the same thing. Here they are again. Wear your air guard, man. From the sign down here, 200 metres, and take a look at this thing. How beautiful is this fig tree? You can sort of live in the roots. They are fantastic. It's worth the little walk down and see. And wear your air guard. Remember, you're in a rainforest here. Lots of mozzies. There's one. Get them. Get them. Get them. Wear your air guard, guys. Radio. Well, when you leave the actual fig tree itself, there is a couple more tracks down here. Um, I'm going along one right now. Mate, seriously, beautiful in here. Let's keep going at the track and I'll see where this ends up. It's like being David Edinburgh in the wild. Oh well, let's keep going. How cool is this? A bike track through a rainforest. Bring your bike up here and go for a pedal. Like I said, there's lots of things to do for your kids around here. Rightio, clampers, when you get here, there's lots of wildlife to see, and there's birds, bush turkeys, and there's this thing, which is a local to the area. He's a big goanna. I left a bit of fruit out, he loved it, but when I come out of my van, he ran up the tree, but, but look, don't pat him. He will bite your finger off. Take some pictures of him and just marvel at what he does. How cool is this guy, eh? This park holds a lot of areas. It holds big rigs, small rigs, tents, the lot. Now, the designated tent area is near enough in the middle of the park. And also, you can have fires here, but the only thing is you've got to have fires in a fire pit. You've got to lift the fire off the ground because it's a state forest, it's just the way it is. They do offer, if you look down here, fire pits in all these campsites. Look, I am really impressed with this site. Look, they're all level around here. You're not gonna level up your tent, are you? But even still, it's got a massive place for a tent. Now, it also has in this area, under cover, picnic areas. And they've got a few picnic tables around the place that haven't got under cover, but who cares? Rightio, what a cool campsite this thing is. Look, if you've got lots and lots of people traveling with yourself, well, I wouldn't say lots, but if you've got three or four people, it's a little hideaway area that you come away from the main camp area. Yes, they do use this for special groups and everything else, but when there's no one around and it's in low season, not in the peak season, come park here. How cool is this? You've got your own picnic tables, you've got your own water, and you've got a fire ring. You can fit four in here. But what a great little campsite. I wish I chose this one before. And you've got solar. You haven't got a lot of overhanging trees that will um, stop your solar. It is in a little clear way. How cool is this? Some more campsites throughout the park. Look, there's campsites all around the edge of the park. These are the closest ones to the river you can actually get. As you can hear it, just what a place to camp. You get your own fire pit, you get your own water, and look how large this site is. Look, to get down to this site, you have to go through the trees and everything else and down a bit of a slope to get down there. So look, if you haven't got a four wheel drive and it does rain here, you're gonna find it hard getting out of that little area there. So you're best off parking up the top. But trust me, there is heaps of campsites up the top. Seriously, the campsites just get better and better. Take a look at this little hideaway. You got your own fire pit, which is great. There's plenty of wood around here. You just got to go foraging for it. Try to pick some dry stuff. It's very moist around here. You're going to get wet wood and it's not going to burn. So if not, bring your own. Look at this little place. It's a great area to camp. You can get around two of your caravan mates in here, if not three, but just a bit of a heads up also. As you can tell right beside me, there is a few mud tracks here. So when it does rain, yes, it, it will get boggy. And if you're not a good driver, yes, you will get bogged. So just be aware of that when you come into areas like this. Take a look at this one I've scabbed, eh? It's huge, you can fit four of my vehicles on here. Look, I'm assuming you probably have to park in there, but a bit overshaded an area. And I need solar, so I just park out a bit, look, there. It's not very busy at this time of year anyway. It's just after peak period. So look, if you want to come up here around peak period, it is spring now. So please, when you come up here, wear your shoes. There's lots of snakes around this area. Look at this site, mate. Seriously, I am so impressed with this site. It's level, it's got a fire pit. What more do you ask? And if I look around, I bet you any money I'll find water. Righto, clampers, I hoped you like the campsite at Broadwater in the State 
forest up here just outside of Ingham. It is a great little campsite. Phone reception is a bit dodgy. Toilets are fantastic. There's only one bin here on the way out, so meh, council put a couple more bins here, but it costs money to empty. But otherwise, this place is a must. Seriously, it is so quiet. There's swimming areas. There's hidey holes all around here that you can camp in private. You're not next to anyone. There's water everywhere. Seriously, you can't ask for any more. Sad to say, barbecues are not working. Mm, so bad. Oh well, Blew. it's a bit of a track on the way here, 17 kilometers of corrugated road, but I'm fine. Um, even with my vehicle, it was not too bad. But otherwise, do yourself a favor, get your RV, your caravan, or your tent, whatever, bring it up and stay for a couple of nights. Cheap as, like I said, $7 a night, woohoo. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up, thumbs down, totally in your hands. If you haven't done it already, turn your notifications on so you get the latest videos when they come online for you. And also, it's a must, hit that subscribe button. E -e -e -e. Right, I'll talk to you soon. Have a great weekend. <laughs>